uh, want to talk about uh, a very ambitious plan that's in the works. Uh, we should uh, about COVID in schools. Uh, so Yale yesterday announced that it plans to hold most of its classes online next semester. It said students who do not attend classes on campus will be tested weekly for the coronavirus. By contrast, Cornell University, my alma mater, is making the case that on-campus instruction is the safer alternative than online classes. The university's president making that argument in a Wall Street Journal op-ed this week. And joining us right now is Martha Pollack, the president of Cornell University. Martha, thank you for joining us. Uh, we all read the op-ed. We all read your email when it came out to, to us alumni. Um, it's an interesting argument to make. Tell us about the math that was behind the decision that it's actually safer to have students in class than to have them off off campus, which is, I think was really the argument, uh, Skyping in or, or Zooming in to class. Sure, and I, I wanna be clear, it's safer for our students at Cornell. We did the study with regard to the conditions here in Ithaca. It does not necessarily apply elsewhere, although the methodology could be used elsewhere. Basically, what we know is that up to about 50% of our undergraduates plan to return to Ithaca, regardless of whether we're, we're online or whether we are having face-to-face -face classes. They've told us that through surveys, and we've spoken with local landlords. And the issue is that if we are having residential instruction, we can mandate testing, testing and tracing and isolation at, on a very aggressive, regular basis. We will be much less able to do that with students who were online and just happen to be living in Ithaca as opposed to Chicago or Atlanta or wherever. All right. Martha, let's talk about this testing and tracing plan because it's ambitious, it's aggressive, and perhaps could be a model for others, not just universities, but even K through 12. I don't know if you think that's doable. Um, how is it going to work? You're going to be doing what's called pooled testing. How frequently right. is that testing going to happen? Right. So the plan is to test every single student once a week. Uh, originally, for the first test, when they return on campus, it may be the nasopharyngeal test that you see uh, being done all over the country. Uh, that would be very unpleasant to do every week. So after that, we will be moving either to cheek swabs or saliva or something in, in the front of the nose. Um, it will be done weekly, and it will be done, as you say, with a pool test. So with pool tests, you take groups of 10 samples, you mix them together, and you do one test. And if that test is negative, then that whole batch of, of people who you've tested is cleared. If it's positive, then you go back and you do you use the, the samples that you've saved, and you do individual tests on each of those people. That obviously saves a lot of costs. Uh, the FDA has just put out right. guidelines for using that kind of pool testing. Martha, what are you going to do if somebody uh, has COVID? And how are you going to prevent the house parties uh, that we're seeing all over the country already now uh, in Ithaca from taking place and, and potentially spreading this? Yeah, well, those are two different questions. So obviously, the whole point of testing is so that you can catch the infection early and you can then do uh, contact tracing and you can quarantine. And if someone has COVID, do isolation. So it really is the classic uh, public health triad for controlling communicable diseases. You test, you contact trace, and you quarantine or isolate. As far as parties go, look, we're not, we're not naive. We know that we're not going to be able to entirely control student behavior. Students are students. They're 18 to 21-year-olds. They're, they're young adults. We think we can influence it to some extent. We're going to have a very extensive public health campaign. We're going to work with student leaders on bystander intervention, uh, which is something we use to help prevent sexual assault. We're going to really try to create a community of caring. But of course, we, we do know that there will be parties. There will, there will be violations. Um, two things. One is we will have a series of escalating interventions. You know, you forget your mask. We're just going to remind you to put your mask on. If you continue to misbehave, we will have uh, escalating steps to, to try and, and, uh, and get you to behave according to the behavioral expectations for the campus. Secondly, it is the use of this very aggressive, very frequent testing that we hope will enable us to, to catch infections and quarantine and isolate people early enough.